How are you doing? I'm well, Stacy. How are you? Good. Yeah, nice to meet you. Where are you at? Looks like I'm in Arizona. Okay. All right. So it's it's four o'clock and hot out there. Uh, well, it's beautiful out here. It's Is not too hot. Been? It's about 80 degrees, though, but it's beautiful. It's good. Okay, so it's not, it hasn't gotten too hot yet, then. And where are you, in New Jersey? I'm in Tallahassee. Oh, Tallahassee, okay. Yeah, yeah, so it was a beautiful day here as well, too. Yeah. Great. Uh, so far, we just moved to, we just moved to Florida in uh, like November, but we really kind of were gone November, December, and like and then but the winters in Florida, I'm telling you, were just beautiful. I just love the winters here. I don't know about Arizona, but in Florida, uh, awesome. well, Arizona, the winters are magnificent and the summers are oppressive. Right. I haven't been through a summer yet, so we'll see. Like, yeah, May, June, July, August, or maybe June, July, August. I'm not sure. It's not quite May yet, so we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, the good thing Probably is that we're probably July. too, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, exactly, yeah, well, see, I was in last year, this time last year, exactly this time last year, I was in Sedona, and it was, like, perfect temperature there, it was beautiful, yeah, so we spent, like, maybe two weeks or so there, so up until August of last, like, oh, uh, yeah, August of last year, we were living in an RV and just traveling around is what we were doing. So we ended up spending a couple of weeks up in Sedona. Oh, you know, so many just said how beautiful it was. And I was like, I'll oh, check the Sedona place out. It, it is good. beautiful. Yeah, I love, I just love like Southern Utah and then like up into the Northern Arizona area. It's just so gorgeous up in that area. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Okay. So Maureen is here. Scott is here. Morgan's here. Okay. So I appreciate you guys hopping on. And um, so we're going to talk, we're going to go over the pitch today. So what I'm going to do is show you the, the deck and we'll just go like through the offering is what we'll do. And then I'm going to get into the portal and show you how to do the portal. And also I'm going to go over the deals, uh, the deals that we have. So actually today we closed on our Leesburg property, which is in, I haven't, I haven't posted it out, but it's inside the fund. So this fund is, um, it's like, it's basically me putting like six, six, six deals into one fund is what it is. So it's not just syndicating for like one deal. It's actually six, there'll be, by the end of this year, there'll be six deals. So we closed on we closed on one in August, which is in the North Georgia mountains. We closed on another one in November, which was in like Central Georgia area, and then we just closed on the Leesburg one, which is kind of right north of Orlando. We have one under contract, which is the one I'm raising the money for right now, which is in Atlanta. It's in Carrollton, which is a suburb of Atlanta, and um, and so uh, that's kind of what it is. We'll have probably about six facilities. I'm actually meeting with an owner tomorrow that has some props, has three properties. So we may be able to just tie all that up. I'm not sure, you know, we'll see. And uh, he really, he wants to own or finance too. So we're trying to work all that through, which is really cool. The Leesburg property, the one that I closed on now, I got that one owner financed, okay? But the other two, we, we raised the money cash. Cash is king, obviously, and getting a bank loan is sucks right now. So uh, like really don't want to do that. We're doing a loan right now on another property that we have in Tennessee. And uh, it's just been like pulling teeth. It's like we got that thing under contract in November. We still haven't even closed on that now. Wow. Horrible. Yeah. So. And the owner is being cooperative. And we got, he's like, he's no, he's getting pissed. Honestly, he's getting pissed like that. Yeah. That's one of those ones where he's just getting pissed. So we have to close this Friday. We're supposed to close this Friday. He said, I'm not going to, he's like, I'm not going to extend it. We better close this Friday, you know? I'm like, oh, so we're trying to close it. That's not in the fund. So in the fund, I mean, the purpose of this fund is that I've been doing this now for like six years, going on seven years. And, um, and we come across deals all the time. If you guys, if you guys don't know me, I buy mismanaged facilities, severely mismanaged facilities facilities that nobody else can buy really because you have to have cash to buy them and nobody has you know not a lot of people have 2.5 million dollars in you know cash or whatever so and a lot of people don't understand the concept of the uh, don't understand the concept of owner financing so they never even offer this right they never even try to see if they can get it so so we we've, we've over the course of the last like six years of doing this, we've come across a lot of properties that are between one and three million dollars. 
and they're severely mismanaged facilities and they want more than what people will pay, you know, normal people will pay because when you look at a property, it's like, oh, it's only worth this much because that's what it's making, right? And so people won't pay more for a property, you know, if it's not making that much money because they don't understand this concept. So that's what cash is for. That's what, the, that's what the fund is for. And that's what the cash is for is to buy these types of properties. I call these properties the sweet spot. And, uh, and uh, especially from one to $3 million, because uh, it's very, very hard to have, you know, $1.5 million in cash. So a lot of these properties just get missed. And so the one that we have Carrollton, the one that we have under contract right now, it's $1.4 million. And I'm trying to raise money for it. And we can, you know, we can more than double the value of this property by just raising the rents. All we have to do is raise the rents. And the owner does not want to do that because the owners have this property for a long time and he just doesn't want to like piss anybody off, right? And so I'm going to get into that too, but um, there's all kinds of scenarios like this. And uh, so that's why we're raising the money. Now we own, me and my husband, we own, a we own 12 properties ourselves personally, all through Georgia and Florida. Uh, we're going to sell three of our properties. I'm going to start pitching those this week in Atlanta. And um, so that we can get more money so we can, you know, buy more, you know, bigger deals and stuff like that. And, uh, and then we have three properties now inside the fund. And, uh, and then we're looking to close on our fourth property in the fund uh, in the next, uh, by June 30th. That's when we're, the closing date for Carrollton is June 30th. And then we'll have another property in Tennessee that we're buying as well. So, and uh, that's kind of us, kind of us. We are completely vertically integrated, all right? So that we do not get third-party management. We are the third-party management because we manage our own properties. My husband is ba it's basically my husband. And underneath my husband, we have Bonnie. Bonnie's worked with us for seven years. And uh, she really kind of manages everything. And uh, and uh, and then underneath her, we have our, our phone people. We have three phone support people that answer our phones 24 seven. We have one, two, three, okay. One, two, three, four, five uh, boots on the ground people. And um, and they're the ones that go to all the facilities and manage all the facilities, but they don't stay that they're just there for like, you know, a day, check on stuff, do work, and then they leave. So there's no manned facilities anywhere. Uh, there's just like boots on the ground, completely remote, completely electronic, completely online. And then we just have a boots on the ground person that goes once a week and checks on the facility. Wow. And um, unless it needs a little bit more work and then they obviously stay there and do a little bit more work. Let's see what else. And then, what are the uh, sizes of these facilities, Stacy? Like, they're like I would say twenty thousand to thirty thousand square feet, something like this. Okay. Anywhere I mean, from numbers of units. What does that translate to? Like a hundred to two hundred, maybe a hundred to yeah, hundred to two hundred, something like that. Hey, Mark, you're here again. Can't get rid of you. Oh, uh, you know what? I like you. How about that? Uh, can you show us some pictures of the facility? Yeah, do that. And then, so then I was going to, I'm going to show you all lots of pictures, but I'm going to show you where to find those too. So you can find them yourself. All right. So go into the portal is what you're going to do. So everybody needs to be in the portal <laughs> and then go to the self storage fund of America portal. Okay. And, uh, and then I'll just put this right into the chat really fast. So everybody has this. And so y'all can get in and get all this. Um, okay. Now, if you want to access first, what first you need to, you need to set up an account to so click access the PPM and get in. And then you can set up your account here. Once you have your account set up, you're going to log in. And then I'm going to show you where to find everything. Hang on, let's see. Okay. Yeah. I think I can. Yeah. Here it is. So now you're going to go into documents right here. This is where I'm, this is where you can get all of the supporting documents. You have to upgrade to, make sure you upgrade to investor status. Because if you do not have investor status, all you have access to is the PPM. So definitely upgrade. As soon as you get in, just up, I said, tell everybody, just upgrade to investor status. So you can read the PPM, which looks like this. Okay. And it looks like it's 102 pages of like 
rules and regulations of the fund. That's, you know, the PPM is basically the Bible of the fund, okay? And then you can get into the document section, and this is where I tell everybody to go. And um, so every single one of our facilities, so all four of them have an executive summary. So you can see Blairsville executive summary. You can download that. Carrollton executive summary. Leesburg Carol, and then Macon. Okay, so these are the four facilities inside the fund right now. Or sorry, there's three now, and then the, the fourth one is the Carrollton one is the one that we're going to buy. Okay, so the first one that we the first one that we bought was a uh, Blairsville, and you can open this up. Let me open all these up so everybody has access to this. Everybody can see these. Okay. So now um, let me share my screen here and let's go to, not Max, you know, we go back to Abel. No. Blairsville. This is the very first one that we, let me, let me share my screen. This is the first one that we bought. Okay. It's got a little office space up here a garage storage. It looks like a storage facility. It's got climate controlled units, indoor climate control. This is the indoor climate control. It's got lots of land. It's got a house on the property. <clears throat> that one, we're gonna rent it out for $1,500 a month. It's not included into the numbers. So we'll, we'll get, that's an extra $1,500 a month we're gonna get. And you can see the Blairsville. Blairsville is like in the North Georgia mountains. This is the property. It's actually three different properties. You can see one, two, and three. There's the storage, the main storage area. There's a lot. And then there's more. He started adding more units over here. This is where the house is. This is the barn. This is an open space. We cleared this whole area. And this is where we're going to park a uh, boat and RVs. That was not included into the numbers as well, too. So that is a that's a project that we're working on. We just got it all cleared. And so now we're going to start, you know, we're going to put a big sign out that says we park boat and RVs and uh, we're going to park them here. OK, is it going to be exterior parking or interior enclosed? I don't know. It's just like just exterior parking. It's like, yeah, <clears throat> probably do like probably do like maybe 60, 75 dollars a month. Something like that is what we can do for that. Probably put like maybe I would say 10 spots depending on how big the unit into you know, the space is, but it's, it's, it doesn't look big, but it's pretty big space. So we'll probably make another, let's say we make another six, $700 a month on that. Is it going to be graveled or canopy? Yeah. And it's like, it's kind of like, it'll be gravel. We're going to put some gravel down, but there's no canopy or anything there. It's just open. <laughs> what it is. If it was closed parking, you'd be able to get way more money for it. Um, okay. All right, so that's that's the Blairsville one. This is the Blairsville. Just to give you an idea, that when we we picked this one up for a million dollars, and we're going to be able to uh, take it to three over three million dollars, just because the owner was charging twenty dollars for ten by tens, and it should be a hundred dollars. So you could see he was at fifty cents a square foot. We're taking it to ninety nine cents a square foot. And is he full there? He was full. Yeah, he was full of people with crap in it and nobody paying, all right? That's what, that's basically how you look at it. He's like, I'm full. A lot of people left when we raised the rates to uh, to a dollar to a dollar square foot. So, you know, think about it. If you're charged $20 a month for 15 years for a 10 by 10, and then somebody comes in and buys it and raise the rates to uh, $100 for a 10 by 10, you'd be pissed off, right? But guess what? I want if you're not going to pay, get out, right? Because we're going to find people that actually will pay that amount of money. Is what we're going to do, and it's so funny on this too. It's like so funny because we're making. He was making eight thousand dollars a month on this property, and we are forty five percent full, and we're making twelve thousand dollars a month. That is mismanaged property, right? So that's, you know, we just come in, raise the rates, piss everybody off. Anybody that wants to leave, leave. If you want, if you don't leave and you're not going to pay, we just auction you off, get you out of there. And then all the meanwhile, we are, we are marketing for new tenants. I mean, we're getting new tenants all of, every, every day, every week we're getting at least one new tenant. You know, typically it's like one new tenant a week. So that's like kind of the average if you think about it. 
And when you say you're making, is that your revenue or NOI? That's the revenue. It's twelve thousand dollars a month is what it's making. Yeah, it's the income. Yeah, I mean uh, NOI is after expenses and stuff. Yeah, after expenses and stuff, you know. But uh, the income is actually twelve thousand dollars a month. The income on this property that I just showed you should be twenty three thousand dollars a month. And we are on target to make $23,000 a month. It's just going to take a little time to do that, right? Because sure. we kicked everybody off. So we've got to get them all in and stuff. It just takes time to do that, really. Okay. So that's that one. That's Blairsville. And then we have the next one that we bought was uh, Max. Max, this is going to be a good one. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. About it. And uh, this one is uh, in Macon. If anybody knows Macon. It's like right dead center in the middle of Georgia. This is the ugliest storage facility in Georgia. No, it's not in Georgia. I was saying Macon. Ugliest storage facility in Macon. All right. And we picked it up. This is what it looks like. And um, the owner basically ran this thing to the ground is what he did. He ran it to the ground. He didn't make any money on this. He was making $1,000 a month is what he was making. So this facility has 170, 171 units and a big commercial, a big building right here, which we are now in the process of putting units in. It's, it's going to be, it's not going to be climate control, it's just indoor units. And uh, so we cleared this space out. We did an auction. Somebody came in, bought the auction, cleared the entire space out for free for us. And then our boots on the ground person, who's also a contractor, is in there right now building indoor units for us, right? So we're adding units to this as well. And um, so that's being done. That's been done. Yeah, we've just been doing that since like maybe a month or two. And it's, I mean, it's a great area. It's right in between Warner Robins and... Um, and Macon, and here's here's our here's our competition right here. This facility right here was on the market for two million dollars. I'm not sure if it's sold or not. I'm not sure. We could look it up and see. But, and then this is ours. Max is a whole. So this right here, this is like this is like a three acre lot right here, and then this lot is included. It's another like four acres. So we have a total of seven acres. It's like this massive huge space. And um, if we wanted to clear this out and do, and Pete already said he's going to clear it out and do some parking, try to figure out what to do with this space back here as well. We just haven't figured that out yet. We're just trying to work on getting this one cleaned up. So this is 171 units plus that commercial space. You can see here's that one. It's two lots. And then there's another lot right here that we got. It's two lots. We got it for $375,000. He was making $14,000. It's it's a total of 20,000 square feet. We got 20,000 square feet of storage for $375,000, all right? So we're going to take it from making no money to being worth over $2 million, that's what we're doing. And I put $200,000 in for CapEx, but guess what? We haven't spent hardly any money on this stuff, like at all. The painting will probably cost a little bit, but actually our boots on the ground person is going to just paint it. We have like the best boots on the ground uh, person that we hired and he can just kind of do everything. So it's going to save us a lot of money with him. It's going to be really nice. So you could see this is a 23%, um, a 24% cash on cash return for this one. You just have to give us some time to stabilize it. These types of properties, I mean, essentially they just take a lot of work. It's So basically we bought this facility and the first thing that we noticed is that it was getting broken into all the time. And the reason it was getting broken into is because there was no lights anywhere, just complete darkness, darkness everywhere. It's completely fenced in, but in the middle of the night, people would just break in, cut the, you know, cut the fence and, um, you know, get in there. But I don't know what they were taking because there was a whole, there wasn't anything there, you know, but they would just get in. And so the first thing that we did, Pete was like, the absolute first thing that we have to do is put lights up. So he contacted Georgia Power and like, look, you need to like put lights up on this thing. And so Georgia Power came out and put lights out. And I'm going to tell you, this storage facility is the brightest thing in the block. You can see this thing from like miles away. It's the brightest thing. So, um, and then the second thing that we have to do now is just get like security cameras up. And we're doing the process of doing that all the while 
you know, Travis is there and he's cleaning it up and fixing things and like, you know, getting all that stuff done, making it look nice. And then eventually we'll have it uh, painted. We're going to paint the first part. We're going to paint the front where you see the blue is, that's kind of the front. And then on the back, it's like brown because the owner never painted it. That's why it's two different colors. So he's, we're going to do the same thing as we'll paint it. We'll start filling it up and then we'll paint the back as well too. You know, as soon as we can, we're going to start filling it up, but we just haven't really been marketing to get people to, but the funniest thing is people do call and they ask us if they can rent, but we just haven't done it yet because it really needs to be cleaned up and safe and secure and stuff. Okay. But we'll take that. It's literally that, that one front area where this, this 170 units are plus the, the 170 units equals $2 million to fill the 170 units up at 8% vacancy equals $2 million, okay? We did not include that commercial space into the number, so we'll add those as more units, all right? That'll be like phase two. And then we'll start clearing the back up and we'll figure out what we can do in the back. We'll do, Pete says he wants to do parking back there. If we can afford it, we can raise the money, and then maybe we could do some commercial parking, not commercial, uh, covered parking. I really think that we could do some covered parking back there. It'd be really nice. There's a lot of space back there. So we're just gonna work through that as we get to that, it's like phase three is what that is, okay? Um, and then let's see what else. And then the next one that we, the one that we closed on today was, uh, no, not this one, hang on. Um, be good. So that's the one that we closed on today. And I'm gonna show you this one right here. This is the one that's in Leesburg, Florida. It's 143 units, 10,000 square feet. And then plus it has commercial space that's $126,000. It's 50% full, okay? This is what it looks like, all right? This is a big building. This space right here, this is commercial space. Somebody rents this space out right here that you see for $4,500 a month. They moved in on April 1st. Uh, and then also this building is being painted. It'll be painted next, this, this weekend it'll be painted. So I'll be able to show pictures to everybody. We already have the paint and the contractors already ready to go to get, you know, to paint this weekend. So we've closed on it this Monday and we'll have this building painted over the weekend. Okay. So it'll look a lot better. It's just one of these old, look, this is very cool, like little piece right here. So we just need to make sure, we just need to make it look a little bit better. And this is in Leesburg. Leesburg is a Leesburg is a suburb of Orlando, and it's right next to the villages, which is like a very, very good area to be in. Honestly, it's this is this is a very good area. And also, there's only four other uh, climate controlled storage facilities within a five mile radius. So there's really not a lot of competition. So um, we really need to just get it filled up, right? And then we just need to raise the rates. So we're going to make $126,000 a month. There's two, there's also a commercial, this space right here, you can see this, this part where this building is, this part, that's another commercial space. There's an office space there and it goes all the way across the building. And that is also $4,500 a month. So that and that is $9,000 a month. And then over here is some more commercial space that is not rented out that we need to clean up really a little bit and then get rented out is what we need to do. So there's there's a little bit of opportunity over here, but it is it does have nine thousand dollars in office space a month, like ten thousand dollars, about ten thousand dollars a month in office space, and then it makes one hundred and eight thousand dollars in um, in the storage, but it should be making around two hundred, two hundred, maybe two hundred fifty thousand for the storage. Okay, because it comes out to between two and three dollars a square foot, really, for the storage. Okay, now this right here, this is the space. We did not also include the outdoor parking area. There's no money being made on this section right here, but it's included into the property. So we will figure out what to do with this space. We can make more money. Those numbers are not included into the numbers, okay? And then also we talked to this guy right here, right? This is Mr. Ross is his name, and he wants to sell this property to us and he'll own or finance it as well. So we could convert this, he has the gymnastics. He's like, I'm old, I just wanna sell this thing. I said, we could convert this if we wanted to into climate control and then do some more parking here and own this whole block. What do you think? Should we do it? No, that's the question of the day. Should we buy this? I'm not sure, but definitely we have this space right here. Let me see, but it'd be kind of nice to own all this, convert it. Mission self-storage just rules Leesburg. 
here's our property right here. This is what it looks like. Okay. And um, let's see what else. Okay. Oh, there's the building. Isn't that a beautiful building? It just looks so beautiful. It's, it's, it's actually really nice inside. I'll show you some pictures. There it is. Let's see. It's really nice inside. So this, the, the building is here. That's my husband. That's Lillian, my daughter. He's checking out the door. He's like, okay, let me check these doors and make sure they work. Oh, no, sorry. That's the freight elevator. This is the freight elevator is what this is. So you come in and then you can go. It has two levels, basically, is what it has. Okay, so this is closed on. This one we got owner financed. This one we got owner financed. These are our, these are our competitors here, Lakeside and all this. This is our competitors. And um, that's the property where it's located. This is the numbers. Essentially, it's $2.4 million. And just the storage itself would be take it to $1.82. And then with the commercial property, we'll be able to increase it as well and run the numbers. Okay. So we'll, we'll be able to double the value of this property as well. And the good thing is that we see the, the financing terms are here. It's $2.4 million, 30% down, 5% interest, interest only payments for two years. It's a $7,000 month, a monthly payment for two years, right? And the cash on cash comes out to 26%, 26 to 30%, something like that is what it comes out to. So that's the property that we got that we close on today. Well, I can just click on this. That's good. Let me try to find. Okay, so this is the one that we're trying to close on now. Here, this is the one we're raising the money for. This is the Able Self Storage. So there's a big, there's a large twenty thousand square foot commercial property. There's a big open space, and then there's storage here. Okay, there's one hundred and fifty storage units. All right, and then there's also, there's 150 doors, and then there's also this here, which is um, one, two, I think there's nine, there's nine doors that he charges $500 a month for, which is a 2,000 square foot commercial space for $500 a month. He has not raised the rents in years. He does not want to just, he doesn't want to piss anybody off. Right. But honestly, the thing is, is these really should go for like two thousand dollars. It's a dollar a square foot, I think is reasonable. Right. But the truth is, is I don't know if we're going to increase if we're going to increase the rent on these things or we could just make this into into indoor climate control. So we'll look at we'll look at that. I didn't even put the numbers, these numbers into the deal. Honestly, I just didn't know. I didn't look at it. I didn't add this in because I just didn't know if it was going to be a good deal. I really only just went off the storage. The storage facilities are making $150,000, all right, uh, $150,000 a year. And this is not included into that price at all. So he's making 150 grand on the storage itself, okay? It's not bad, this looks good. It's in Carrollton. We own, we own uh, five storage facilities in this area right here. All right, so adding one to this area, it's just like adding another one. Right, it's not going to be that big of a deal because we're already in that area. Here's the facility itself. You can see. I wanted to get to the numbers. Is what I wanted to get to, so y'all can see the numbers here. So you can see it's one point. We picked it up for one point four million dollars. He's making one hundred and fifty thousand. There's one hundred and seventy five doors. Yeah, one hundred seventy five doors. Sorry, my bad. Twenty five thousand square feet. He's at sixty nine cents. He should be at ninety five. He's thirty percent vacant. We ran the numbers and, and put it under contract at a seven cap for $1.4 million. All we have to do is raise the rents to 90, 95 cents. This area should be 95 cents. This is like a dollar a square foot area is where this, this area is a very, lots of like growth, super fast, you know, super nice area. It should, the storage itself should really be at a dollar a square foot and be valued at uh, $3.1 million just by raising the rents, right? We just have to get it to that number is where we have to get it, okay? So these executive summaries, here's our competition. These are all inside the portal. You saw what I did is I just went to the portal and I just downloaded those, okay? That's all I did is just download them. So you can look at these as well too. The one thing, the other thing I'm gonna download is the financial model. I'm gonna download that. 
And then also I'm going to open up the um, the offering, the investor presentation, which is what we're going to go over right now. And I will um, share my screen on that so you guys can um, share my screen. Oh, that's not share screen. This is share screen. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Okay. You can see. This is the sorry. This is the uh, the investor presentation, and you have access to this in the portal. Okay, and uh, and then what you what I wanted to show you was that we kind of sort of went over a lot of this already. We went over the targeted part pipeline. We went over underwriting. We're going to go over underwriting of how we run the numbers. We went over some case studies pipeline. So this is kind of what we went over. The investment, the offering is right here. This is just a little bit about us. Here's the offering. Okay. So we are trying to raise, raise $7.8 million. And we're, our targeted IRR is 19%. There's a whole period of five years with, with two extensions if needed. There's a preferred return of 10%. So whatever amount of money you put into the deal, you'll make 10% on it. And then there's a couple of hurdles. There's an 80-20 split and a 75-25 split. And once I hit a, once I hit 15% IRR, if I can get over 15%, then I get I get 25% and you guys can split the rest. So that's what that means right here. And then it's quarterly payouts. As soon as we have money, we'll pay you out. Right. You know, but you just gotta give us some time to stabilize these properties. I mean, everybody's always asking, when am I gonna get paid out? If you wanna get paid out right now, if you need money like right now, if like your issue is cash flow, then you know, this may not be the fund for you, right? I need time to stabilize my properties. So the Blairsville one, that will probably be paid out uh, this next quarter, right? But making is gonna take a while to get paid out, you know? So, and I'm not, you're not gonna get that much money because it takes, you know, I'm only making $12,000 a month. It costs money to run the thing, you know? So if you want, if you need money now, then go find a fund that has income producing properties and they're making money right now. But for me, I buy mismanaged facilities. This fund is for mismanaged facilities and it takes, it could take up to a year or longer to stabilize these properties. So to get a return immediately, right? It's gonna take a little while. I mean, maybe you get a little bit of return because I'll make a little bit of profit, but to get a big return, it's gonna take a little while. What's okay. the management fee on the- Right here, the management fees are 0.625% of the gross purchase price okay. per year. And the acquisitions fee is 0.50%. There's no refinance fee. There's no disposition fee. And then if I do develop, I'll get either 5 or 7% or 5, five plus 7% for managing the development. So let's just say on the ABLE one, we do do the, um, you know, the we do do the, the, we take that building and make it into climate control, right? Or on Macon, we clear it out and we put, you know, covered space in and stuff, you know, <clears throat> you know I'll yeah. get paid a little bit for managing that. Okay. And, and who's then, running their like back office uh, to ensure that all of these things are tracked appropriately on that? So we have essentially Pete is like the main person and underneath him, underneath them, her underneath him is Bonnie. She's been working with us seven years. She's our COO. And then underneath Bonnie, we have like, we have Jim who does onboarding. We have Charmaine. She's like our in-house purchaser. She does all the quotes for all the contractors and agents. Oh, I'm, I'm talking about fund administration. So are you using like Estro? Oh, fund administration? Oh, we, that's Adam. Adam is our fund administrator. So we have, an, we have a, a, like a, he's a CPA, he's a tax strategist, and he's our fund administrator. So he kind of manages all that. And then Ann is here. Ann works for me, and she's like the investor relations. So she's the one that you always is emailing you, and you're like, "I already got this email." That's Ann. Great. And do you have, uh, we'll say, an external auditor to ensure that these numbers, that when you produce them and these uh, fees and returns are all uh, accurately calculated? Well, that's where, I mean, that's really what Adam does. But then like, for, for instance, like cost seg, I mean, we had like, we had somebody doing the cost seg for us for all of our deals. So we'll hire somebody out if we need to. But like, Adam is the one that put the financial model together for us. 
Right. Well, what I'm saying is like, if I, if I drop like a quarter million dollars into this fund, I want to make sure that someone's watching the numbers. It doesn't work for you. Right. That's Adam. Adam is the one that does all that for us. He's so Adam is external. Yeah. He's external. Yeah. He's a, he's a, he's a CPA. He has his own like practice and stuff. He doesn't oh. work for us. He's just, he just manages my funds for me. He's the administrator. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You. Yeah. So Adam, and actually when you come to the quarterly meetings, you'll meet Adam. So Adam is the one that puts the entire like quarterly presentation together. He's the one that's like making sure the P&L, the balance sheet are correct. And he's going through the numbers. I mean, he's the one that does all the K-1s. He's paying everybody out. That's what he's doing is all that kind of stuff. So and would you get a key? Like, the financial model for us. Okay, yeah, thank you. And and uh, what is your projected like? If if you close the fund off, the fund off at these four assets, um, would you project a a negative K one, and by how much? Do you have any idea? Well, I mean, thank God for you know cost seg. Right. Because like, you know, we, we only cost, we only did cost seg on our Blairsville deal uh, for this past year. So we had, we did two and we got quite a bit of money back for that, honestly. And, there, and all of the, all of the investors got to share in this. And so, and so uh, Adam kind of managed that this year. Uh, we'll have four properties that we'll be able to cost seg. So you will not, like if you come in now, you will not be able to get the, yeah, obviously the depreciation from last year, but you'll be able to get everything that we get from the four facilities for this year. And we'll be able to cost seg all four of those as well too. Right, okay. And way. then, but then when you sell them, if you are planning on completely disposing of them. We have to pay, we got to pay that back. Then you get your recapture, right? Yeah. And, and it, it sounds questions. to me though That's like why the for way... our personal ones we've never done cost seg. <clears throat> we really we, yeah. we haven't done a lot of cost seg yet. So it, but it, I'm just saying that it sounds to me that like having you heard you cut, talk about this a couple of times, it sounds like your your motivation is to exit them fully instead of refi and hold, right? Absolutely. Now just this Leesburg one, that's the goal. The okay. other ones we can refi out if we need. We we will re probably refi out what we'll do like Blairsville would be a perfect one to just refi out you know honestly it really just depends on the market and like what kind of loan we can get too so for instance I'm buying the facility in Tennessee and it's an SBA loan and they're giving us a three a three-year uh prepa prepayment penalty like if you do you know if you refi out within three years or you know sell within three years or you know that's like a prepayment penalty so yeah. To look at like what the terms of the loans are from the banks to see like what, what offers they're giving us because we only have this 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 fund is a five year fund right so like in two years when I want to refi out if I we decide to refi out I just want to know what the terms are going to be because I don't want to have to like you know pay anybody back if I don't have to or how much is it going to cost me if I pre if I have to have, have a prepayment penalty. Right. So what I'm looking at is is the impetus to exit versus refi and how that affects the IRR of the investor. Right. OK, so actually, OK, so the refi, like if we refi out your uh, your IRR is like going to be way better. Obviously, right. But but then if you do that, and I'm not disagreeing with you. I played with your model enough to, to see that. Yeah. But, but what I'm saying is if it's a five, let's say we don't need the extensions. OK. We refi out after two years once we stabilize, right? Pick your property, whatever it is. Then what does the exit look like? Or what is your impetus to exit? That's what I'm thinking is that from, there is a, a slight disconnect between your interest and investors' interest because when you hit a certain IRR, you participate higher in the, in the, in the, uh, in the waterfall, which is fine. I, I, I think you fully deserve that. I'm just wondering, the impetus is to carry that out to seven years and not sell. Because once you refied, everyone's happy, but then your carry is higher and half of our, we'll say, money is locked up or half of investors' yeah, yeah. money is locked up, right? I mean, honestly, you know, the the number, the return is only, I'm at 19% IRR. So I'm going to make money, I'm going to make the, the money no matter what. Now, the question is, what does the market look like? That's going to be what the the, the end result is going to really do is like is is you know can I refi out and I'm going to look at the numbers and just say okay like if you know can I do that now 
what is the hold time going to be? What is all the fees going to be? Or should I just, you know, hold on to it for cash? Or in five years, should I extend these out? Actually, the truth is, is like, in, you know, I don't really want to sell my properties until I get the, re I get it to the return that I said I was going to get it to. Right. Or at least close to that. So let's say like Leesburg, I'm saying I could get it to $5.5 million. Well, if that happens in the first two years, as it looks like it's possible to do, then in my mind, because I've been in that situation before, you're like, well, what happens if I held it for another two, two years? Right. And then you have a, we have a decision to make. It's like either we're going to exit it after two, three years, or we're going to hold it till five because we can get some more appreciation, cap rate compression. We can, you know, drive this, drive that. And so that's kind of like, you know, it, it, I don't want to be the first. It's going to be that I'm much saying. more appreciation, honestly. Well, the appreciation, I think the appreciation really comes from like it being mismanaged and then stable. Yeah, but I mean, the, the, the cap rate compression and interest rates and what people can finance that, right? If you see interest rates drop real low, then you might see cap compression. Oh, yeah. Let's see. That's why I said I need to watch. I need to watch the market and see right. like what's going to happen. Are the interest gonna, rates going to go back down? Is the cap rate going to go down? What's going to happen? And there's nothing you know in the PPM that forces a trigger to sell or list. Once the valuation, no, it doesn't. The PPM yeah. says that it's up to my discretion. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's, but I mean, that's, that's how that's how a fund is. Yeah, no, I, I, and I, I'm yeah. just saying, like, is there a natural trigger there that that makes us market it, or do because do does or does everything get pushed to seven years with extension because of your discretion? That's you know, that we'll do, risk like, that at that market. time. I mean, essentially, we'll have an investor. Uh, we'll have an investor meeting, and we'll just play out all the scenarios, <laughs> so everybody can have an idea. This is what we did in our last, our quarterly meeting. We play out the scenarios and look at it. And I'm going to say, look, this is what I'm thinking. Like, I really want to just sell this thing because I'm just going to get rid of it. Or no, I want to hold on to this thing because I feel like you know, over the course of the next year or two, like we're going to make this much more money. What do you think? You know, and I'll listen to everybody's opinion. And that's what the quarterly meetings are for. But in the end, it gets to be, it's my decision, me and Pete's decision, because we're the asset managers. But that's what the quarterly meetings are for, is just sit there and talk about this stuff. And they do, everybody in the, all the investors ask lots of questions. I can imagine. What about this? What about this? Let's do this. Let's do this. It's good. It's good for everybody to listen and hear and see what everybody else is thinking and stuff. You know, that's the, you know, that's the whole point of, you know, having those meetings and stuff, yeah. you know, it's good to hear whatever it is. But when people get way too nitpicky, I'm like, look, it's my decision. That's what you guys are here for. It's trust me. Mm -hmm. some, for some reason, Stacy owns 15 storage facilities. She kind of sort of knows at least a little bit what she's doing, right? Yeah, I'm not doubting that. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. So that's that. Okay. So let me get into the, so you guys now have access to that. I'm not going to get to the, the model right now, but I, oh yeah, I was going to finish up the, uh, the thing real fast. Um, okay. The offering is here. So we've already kind of went, we not the offering, the hurdle. This is like basically what's called the waterfall or the hurdle. Okay. And that basically, basically what it's saying is the prep is 10%. If we only hit 10%, then we split 96.4 because I am co-investing 4%. Putting 4% of my, uh, in every time we close on a deal, I put 4% in, okay? And um, and then if we get above 10% to 15%, then I get the 20% promote, all right? And then we split the 76 and, you know, the 76, I'm sorry, we split 76.4 and 20. If I get above 15%, then it's a 71 for 25 split. So I get the 25% promote, right? So my goal is to only put deals in that I know I'm going to make 25% on. That's really my goal in my head. That's what I'm thinking, you know, and uh, and then that way, you know, we can all share in the profits. Okay. So, so just a quick, yes. quick clarifying question on that tier two, um, Stacey, is so if you hit 11, does that does that trigger... The 20% promote, yes. Yeah, because like that'll just bring us down. We hit 11 and we're going to get down to like seven and change, right? Yes. Okay, 76. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So be, being being below 15 is going to be tough for us. 
because it'll bring us we don't, that. yeah we're i mean i'll definitely we'll definitely be above 50 percent. and actually all of the facilities that i own up until now are well above 15 percent so and then the fund the mod this fund model is based off of the 12 facilities that we own personally that's how we came up with the numbers okay thanks um, okay, now let me open up the model so you guys can see this. Everybody, remember, everybody has access to the model. The model is um, here. Let me see. Did I not open up the model? No, I didn't. And uh, so let me share this with you. This is this is available to you, and you could just run your numbers on this. All you have is two spots to put in your numbers. You just open this up. This is what it looks like. So don't get scared if you, you know, like, oh my gosh, this is a huge spreadsheet. You're going to be where it says investor cash flow model. And then you have two spaces. You put the how much you're going to put in and then the date you're going to close, right? So if you're going to close on 431, 23, oops, 431, 2023, 2032, crap. I'm not doing very good today. Four. Oh, 30, no wonder. See, I think I did that. Okay, there you go. Okay. So let's just say that you put $100,000 in at the end of this month. All right. As of right now, we have refinancing turned off for our four deals. Right, except for, actually, I'm sorry. We have refinancing turned on for Leesburg. My goal is to really... Uh, it, my goal is to really, you know, sell these properties in, uh, you know, 18 to 24 months. So let's just say that we keep, we just turn all these on. I, I, obviously, you could see they're all off now. We could just turn these off so you could see. All right. So then you can you can see the uh, the the uh, graph here. You're going to put a hundred thousand in, so you're negative a hundred thousand over the over the next couple of quarters. You get paid a little bit back. Right. And then over the next couple of years, you get paid up to three hundred and forty five thousand dollars. Right. And not including your hundred thousand dollars. Right. So you can see that here. And this is all just based on the three facilities. I mean, sorry, the four facilities. You have Bla Blairsville's here. Let me just move this over. Yeah. And you can see the numbers are all here. So we bought it for a million dollars. Right, we're going to take it from 137,000 to 263,000 dollars, and uh, you know we do this over like a projected month base income, and then you can see if we refi out, if we refi out, we don't have it refi out. I'll come in. I'll turn this on. We're going to refi this one out. Let's just say we refi it out. Now you can see it comes in and then you could see in 18 months, we're going to refi this thing out. We're going to make $1.5 million, $1.6 million. We're going to share those proceeds with everybody, right? And then the exit strategy is in, in month 54 or 54 months, we sell it again and make another $1.3 million. And then we share that with all the investors as well, okay? So you can see... We're all in at you know total payments and total interest right here for the money. Okay. And then also here is the hurdles. So we have hurdle one, right? If we only made the 10% prof, that'd be here. If we did 15%, hurdle two, or less, you know, up to 15%, here's the numbers that we'd be making, and here's hurdle three. Right. So the goal obviously is for hurdle three. And you could see the projected IRR for this facility. If we if we if we go off of refining out in uh, in 18 months, this is the projected IRR. If we say if we come in and, and do this for 24 months, we refi it out. The numbers would change here, 57 percent. Okay, and you could just play around with the numbers. You could say, okay, what if we refi it out in 36 months? And you can come back and you could see the IRR goes down. The longer that you you know, the longer you take to to um, to refi out, then the, the, the shorter the IRR comes. And you could do that for every single one of your um, facilities, every single one of the facilities. So if we were gonna refi out all of them, I'd say, yeah, we're gonna just refi everything out. And we're gonna, we're gonna refi everything out in 24 months, right? Within two years, all facilities will be, 
uh, refi down. Okay, so this is what the numbers look like. If you put hundred thousand dollars in and you refi out at seven percent interest, this is this this would be the goal. We could change it, and the, the loan that I'm getting right now is nine percent interest. I would not do nine percent. I would do seven percent or less. Essentially, is what I would do, and um, and then we could uh, you know, and then you could see that you it would take you a good like you know two years to get your money back, and then you would start making money. Okay, and then you can look over all at what the schedule is too here. You say, okay, oh, in this next quarter, I'll make a little bit of money. If I put a hundred grand in, I'd make this much money, okay, on a monthly basis. And you can see that when you refi out, you get the distribution, right, of that of that um, refi. And then towards the end, when you sell, when we sell it, you'll make a little bit more money on the back end, right? So the question is exactly what Mark is bringing up. It's like, what's the best way to do something like this? Is it good to refi out, you know, and everybody get their money up front? Or is it good to wait till the end, you know, um, you know, and have a better, you know, have a better IRR or, you know, better IRR or, or, or not, right? So, and then the good thing is that the one thing about this fund that's good is that there's going to be like, you know, six to eight facilities in this fund. So depending on where the market turns is what we can do. Right. So let's just say that, you know, we decide to just sell, you know, we decide to sell Leesburg, you know, we decide to, you know, we decide not to refi Macon out because it's still being worked on. Right. So you can see the numbers change as we go and we can just do that for all the facilities that we have. And so then you can look at your calendar and say, OK, look, I know there's a couple of facilities I'm going to get some money on. But in the end, when we sell, we'll also get some money on, you know, on them as well, too. Right. Because we're selling them. On the back end, so it might be good to get a little bit of money on a couple of them in the middle and then a little bit of money, you know, on the back end as well. So we'll just have to play that by ear and see kind of how the market goes and then what we're, you know, what's going on, but you can check out every single one of the facilities. All their numbers are here, right? On the left, this is all the numbers and projections. Carrollton is here. And then also Lees, I'm oh, sorry, Leesburg, I got to screw over, yeah, screw over and screwed up. Oh yeah, screwed up. Okay, so then all the numbers for Leesburg are here. And then once you, you know, once you look at the, uh, you know, if you want to look at the revenue and the expenses and the numbers, you can see it on a quarterly basis here. And then also you can see the hurdles here as well too, right? So you can see Leesburg, I have it that we are going to, um, we're not going to refi out. Now we're going to just hold on to it for five years. Now, obviously, we have to like sell the property in two years because that's the one that's getting owner financed. But, you know, we'll just say, okay, if I didn't, if I actually held on to this property, the projected IRR is, is 93%, right? So that's a pretty good IRR for a facility that, you know, we got owner finance and we're only paying $7,000 a month on. So you can look at the numbers and see. This one, Leesburg, is set up to be sold and the exit strategy, I think it's set up, yeah, to be sold in two years. Okay, so you can see here's the mortgage payments and stuff. So you can play around with this. This this will be available for everybody. Okay, if you have any questions. Now you could set up a, a Zoom meeting with me at any time. All you have to do is, e is email Anne and she'll, you know, she can meet with you and she can go over and she can give you my link to my calendar. And uh, like I said, we're trying to raise the money now for the Carrollton deal. So any help would be greatly appreciated. The minimum for the fund is $25,000, but we'll take anything that you, you know, as much as you want to give us, we'll take so we can use it for the Carrollton project. But, you know, the, the fund itself is a whole, right? So it's dependent on all the different deals together is kind of how it is. So we're managing six different assets in the fund is what we're doing, okay? And then, uh, and then finally, if you decide that you do want to move forward, all you have to do is go to the dashboard, right? And then you'll see um, this is the steps: one, two, three. Submit your subscription. I mean, sign the subscription. The subscription is the contract. The contract with you uh, between you and the fund. Okay, and it, depending on whether or not you're going to be doing it individually or with the spouse or a part in a, a partner. You would go here, 
This is where if you're going to be doing it with uh, your IRA or 401k, your retirement account, and this one is a company, if you're going to be loaning through your company, okay? This is where you upload your accreditation letter, right? This is a 506C fund, so you have to be an accredited investor. An accredited investor means that you have a million dollars in net worth, or you make two to $300,000 a year on your W-2, and you... Um, you know, depending on how you file, married or, or single, okay? And you have to be able to verify your income. You can see, you can have Adam just verify. If you don't know for sure, you can just set up a meeting with Adam and he'll verify the income for you. I mean, he's a CPA, so he can verify the income, okay? And then this is where you get the wire instructions right here. So you can wire your money over and then, and then also there's all, all the documents are here. The, all the news is here. All the assets. We're going to add Leesburg here. We'll add some news and stuff for Leesburg. Okay. And we do quarterly meetings, you know, once a quarter. All the investors come. And uh, you can watch the replay of the quarterly meeting inside the portal. There's the replays if you want to watch the last quarter as well. Okay. And I think that's it. Any questions? Any thoughts? What are you thinking? You can unmute yourself and, and ask me if you have any questions. Mark is good. Okay, good. Mark is good. What else? Anybody else have any questions about the fund? No, I just want to thank you for the presentation, Stacy. Okay, good. Thank you so much. Yeah, like I said, just, you know, uh, uh, Anna's going to email you the replay, email you the, uh, the financial model if you want to, um, yeah. If you want to, um, you know, run the numbers and uh, if you had, if you need a Zoom meeting, just set up a meeting with me. All right. And we'll go over everything. And if you need to talk to Adam and make sure that you're an accredited investor, let us know and we can send you a link to his calendar as well, too. And you can talk to him for a few minutes. Okay. Anything else? Any thoughts, questions? Thanks. Okay, good. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it, Maureen. Thank you, Stephen, for coming. And Bob, the Bobs, we got two Bobs, Eric and Terry. All right. So we'll be in touch. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Bye -bye. Have a good night.